We are continuing to follow more breaking news from around the country, and this story is coming out of Atlanta, Georgia. I want to pull up a tweet for you right now. We do know it has now been confirmed that Rich Homie Kwan, the rapper, has passed away at the age of 34. Now, this is according to several family members and has now been confirmed by Fulton County as well. Breaking news just hit the hip hop world, and it's got everyone shook. Rich Homie Kwan, the Atlanta rapper who gave us bangers like Type of Way and Flex, has sadly passed away at just 34 years old. But before we dive into the celeb reactions, hit that subscribe button and let's get into this wild story. So here's what really went down. On Thursday, September 5th, news broke that Rich Homie Kwan had died in Atlanta. The Fulton County Medical Examiner confirmed it, but they're still figuring out exactly what happened as of the making of this video. An autopsy is scheduled for Friday, September 6th. Now I know what you're thinking, 34 is way too young, and you're right, it's got the whole hip-hop community in shock. We're talking about a guy who was just hitting his stride, you know? He had so much more to give to the game. Now get this. Just a couple days before he died, Quan posted something on Instagram that's got everyone talking. He shared a pic of himself in a green and white 89 jersey, fixing his glasses with the caption, vision clear, even through the BS. Talk about cryptic, right? It's like he knew something was coming. But let's break this down a bit. The 89 on his jersey? That's the year he was born, 1989. So he's repping his roots, you feel me? And that caption, vision clear, even through the BS. It's like he's saying he sees what's really going on, even with all the drama and nonsense around him. That shushing emoji at the end? It's like he's keeping some secrets. Man, it's giving me chills just thinking about it now. Now, let's get into how the hip-hop world is reacting to this shocking news. Buckle up, because there's a lot to unpack here. Two chains hit up Instagram with a bunch of pics of him and Quan. He wrote, Damn Lil Brother, we just spoke about shooting a video. Special prayer for you and your family, and pray for any and everybody that's dealing with something. My condolences, bruh. Man, it sounds like they were planning to work together soon. That's gotta hurt. You gotta understand, 2 Chains and Quan, they're both Atlanta boys. They came up in the same scene, probably crossed paths a bunch of times, and now 2 Chains is talking about a video they were gonna shoot? That's rough. It just shows you how sudden this all was. One minute you're planning your next move, the next, well, you know, Boozy Badaz couldn't believe the news. He tweeted, just got word at rich homie Quan. Just Odi just talked to Juan the other day. Go me soon. Boozy and Quan had some fire collabs like, like a man and be all right. It's clear this hit him hard. Now Boozy mentioning OD, that's heavy stuff. We don't know for sure if that's what happened, but it's a reminder of how dangerous drugs can be in this industry. And the fact that they just talked, man, that's gotta be messing with Boozy's head. You never know when a conversation with someone might be your last, you know? Quavo from the Migos shared a throwback pic on his Instagram story. It showed him, take off, RIP, rich homie Quan, young thug, and mustard in the studio. He wrote, May God be with us never saw this bring a part of our journey. It's a reminder of how tight-knit the Atlanta rap scene is. This pic Quavo shared, it's like a who's who of Atlanta rap. And it's bittersweet, you know? Seeing Takeoff in there too, who we lost last year. It just shows how much talent has come out of Atlanta, but also how fragile life can be. Quavo's words hit hard. Never saw this being a part of our journey. It's like he's saying, this isn't how it was supposed to go down. Lloyd Banks kept it simple but heartfelt on Twitter. Rest in peace, rich homie Quan. Appreciate what you've contributed to the culture. Condolences to his family and friends. Banks is an OG in the game. So when he speaks, people listen. Him shouting out Quan's contributions to the culture? That's big. It's a reminder that Quan wasn't just about the hits. He was pushing the whole culture forward. R&B singer Jaquez tweeted, Rest in peace, my brother, rich homie Quan. I love you for life. Short and sweet, but you can feel the love. Jaquez calling Quan his brother. That's not just talk. In the music world, these bonds run deep. They're not just colleagues. They're family. And losing family? That's tough, no matter who you are. Young Buck shared his condolences too. Get your rest, homie. God bless you and your family RIP at Rich Homie Quan. Buck's been through his own struggles, so you know he feels this loss. Him telling Quan to get your rest, it's like he's hoping Quan's finally found some peace, you know? 
DJ Scheme summed up what a lot of people are feeling. R.I.P. Rich Homie Quan. Wow. Sometimes there just aren't words, you know? When a DJ like Scheme is at a loss for words, that tells you something. These are people who make a living off words and music, and Quan's death has them speechless. Now, amidst all the tributes and condolences, rapper Erica Banks dropped a bombshell that's got everyone talking. She revealed that she and rich homie Quan had a romantic relationship of sorts. Yeah, you heard that right. She posted, all you wanted was to find happiness again. Always saw it in your face and heard it in your voice. But you had so much left to do. The album, the tour, your birthday. I'm just glad we were able to enjoy such peaceful and memorable moments while you were here, man. Such a sweetheart. Rest in paradise, Quan. Whoa, right? I mean, who saw that coming? This post is giving us all kinds of feels. On one hand, it's a beautiful tribute to Quan, but on the other hand, it's dropping some major tea about their relationship. Now, let's take a quick look back at Quan's career. This dude burst onto the scene in the early 2010 and quickly became a big name in Atlanta rap. He dropped hits like Type Away and Flex, ooh, 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 that had everyone bumping. Now, before all the fame, Quan was just a kid from East Atlanta with big dreams. He actually wanted to be a pro baseball player at first. Can you imagine? Instead of spitting bars, he could have been hitting home runs, but life had other plans for him. Quan started taking music seriously around 2011 when he was fresh out of a stint in jail. He dropped his first mixtape, I Go In On Every Song, in 2012. And boy, did he live up to that title. His unique style, part rapper, part singer, caught people's attention real quick. Then came Type of Way in 2013, and boom. Quan was suddenly everywhere. The song went gold, got remixed by big names like Jeezy and Meek Mill. It was the kind of breakout hit most rappers only dream about. But Quan wasn't done. He followed up with Walk Through featuring Problem and then Flex in 2015. Flex was his biggest hit yet, went double platinum and even had its own dance craze. Remember everyone doing that ooh 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 move? That was all thanks to Quan. He was part of Rich Gang with Birdman and Young Thug, and they gave us the banger Lifestyle. That track was everywhere in 2014. You couldn't turn on the radio without hearing Quan and Thug's unique flows. It was like they were inventing a whole new way of rapping. But things got messy with Thug later on. There was some beef, some name calling, but Quan always said Thug would be his brother for life. That's the thing about Quan. Even when things got tough, he tried to keep it positive. However, Quan's career wasn't all smooth sailing though. He had some run-ins with the law and a few controversies that made headlines. Back in the day, he did some time for burglary. He was only 21 when he got locked up for 15 months. But Quan being Quan, he made the most of it. He read books, wrote raps, and planned his future. He said it was a wake-up call, and that's when he really started focusing on his music. In an interview, Quan opened up about his time inside. He said, my first time being away from home, your whole manhood is taken from you. Your whole freedom is taken from you. It was scary, but it was real life. Can you imagine going from your mama's house to a jail cell? That's gotta be rough. But Quan didn't let it break him. He came out of jail with a plan and a whole bunch of songs ready to go. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade, right? Then there was that lawsuit with his record label, Think It's a Game Records. They were fighting over millions of dollars. Quan said he signed the deal without even reading it properly. Rookie mistake, right? But hey, when you're young and someone's offering you a record deal, you get excited. The lawsuit dragged on for a while, but they managed to settle it in 2016. Quan said after it was all over, I'm glad we were able to come to a resolution that was good for all parties. T.I.G. got my back, so at least that story had a happy ending. And who could forget when he messed up Biggie's lyrics on that VH1 show? The internet went wild, clowning on Quan for days. But you know what? Quan took it like a champ. He said, I took it. I had a good spirit about it. I never let that get to me at all. That's some real maturity right there. Not everyone can laugh at themselves like that. There were some other controversies too, like when some old songs leaked where he rapped about some pretty messed up stuff. Quan apologized, saying he was young and stupid when he wrote those lyrics. And you know what? People accepted that. Because we've all said dumb stuff when we were young, right? Now, there's been some talk about Quan being connected to Young Thug's R.I.C.O. case. But Quan shut that down real quick. He wasn't having any of that snitch talk. For those who don't know, Young Thug's been caught up in this big R.I.C.O. case in Atlanta. It's some serious stuff. 
And because Quan and Thug used to be so tight, some people started wondering if Quan might be involved somehow. But Quan wasn't having it. He came out strong against any suggestions that he might be snitching. And you gotta respect that. In the rap world, being called a snitch is about the worst thing that can happen to you. So Quan making it clear he's not involved, that's him protecting his reputation and his career. Plus, it shows that even though he and Thug had their issues, Quan still had love for his old friend. He wasn't about to throw Thug under the bus no matter what. Now, let's talk about Quan's impact on hip-hop. This dude wasn't just another rapper, he was a game-changer. First off, his style was unique. He had this way of blending, rapping, and singing that was all his own. Before Quan, you were either a rapper or a singer, but he showed that you could be both. He paved the way for a lot of the melodic rap we hear today, and his lyrics? Man, they were something else. Quan could go from hard street tales to emotional love songs and make it all sound authentic. He wasn't afraid to show his softer side, which was pretty rare in rap back then, but it wasn't just about the hits. Quan was part of a new wave of Atlanta rappers who were changing the game. Along with guys like Young Thug and Future, he was pushing rap in new directions. They were experimenting with flows, with melodies, with fashion, everything. And let's not forget his work ethic. Quan was always dropping new music, mixtapes, singles, features. He was everywhere. He showed that in today's music world, you gotta keep feeding the fans. So what's Quan's legacy gonna be? Man, that's a tough question, but I think it's gonna be about more than just his music. Sure, we'll always have bangers like Type of Way and Flex. Those songs are gonna be playing at parties for years to come, but Quan's impact goes deeper than that. He showed a whole generation of rappers that it's okay to be different, that you don't have to fit into a box. Wanna sing and rap? Go for it. Wanna talk about your feelings and still keep it street? Quan showed how to do it. And let's not forget his resilience. Quan faced some tough times, jail, lawsuits, beef with other rappers, but he always bounced back. He kept pushing forward, kept making music. That's a lesson for everyone, not just musicians. Quan also repped Atlanta to the fullest. He was proud of where he came from and he put his city on his back. He once said, I've been put in a position where Atlanta is depending on me. I ride with that on my shoulders. That's some real hometown hero stuff right there, right? And for the hip hop community, it's another hard loss. We've lost too many talented artists too soon. It makes you wonder, what can we do to protect our artists better? How can we make sure they're getting the support they need? So what do you think about all this? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button for more hip hop news and tributes.